doing another soft tackle this week. This actually is probably going to be the last one that I do for for a while. I want to move on to some other flies, but this is the Craven's soft tackle. I discovered it and it was actually listed as the Craven's purple soft tackle, but doing a little research found out that basically it's just referred to as the Craven's soft tackle or Charlie Craven's soft tackle because you can make it different colors if you want. You can have orange, yellow, brown, whatever. Anyway, it's a straightforward pattern. It does have a thorax on it and a lot of soft tackles that people tie these days, they'll put thoraxes on them, but a lot of the traditional ones did not have a thorax per se on it. But it's a simple fly that uses some floss. Uh, I think it looks pretty. For around here, for the panfish, I think it'd be great. But I also think in, in the right colors and everything, I think it would be fantastic for a trout as well. So that's the Charlie Craven soft tackle, and I'll go ahead and get started. Start the Craven soft tackle by placing my hook in the vise. I'm using a Mustad 3906B for this because I like a little bit longer body on this fly. This is a size 14. You could use a 3906B if you want, or even a 3399, which is a little bit more traditional wet fly hook. For thread, I'm using two different types of thread because this has a floss body on it. Even though it's purple and it's going to get dark in the water, I want to try and retain some of that purple color as best I can. If I wrap that purple on this bronze hook, as soon as it gets in the water, it's going to get really dark and you're not going to have much of any purple showing. So underneath it, I'm going to use some white thread just to help that floss retain a little bit of its color. I'll attach my thread. This is a UT, no, excuse me, this is a Uni Thread 8 in white. I'm going to attach that thread just behind the eye of the hook and run it down the hook shank about a third of the way to put in our rib. The rib on this is a gold mylar tinsel. I'm using a Danville 16 and 18, which is the smallest they have. It's a silver and gold mylar tinsel. I will attach that with the gold, or excuse me, with the silver side up. and I will run down a layer of thread. Fairly nice touching turns because I want to keep that even and smooth as best I can down to the end of the shank. It's going to put me right between the point and the barb of the hook. Actually now I'm going to go ahead and flip the hook over and put my tag in. This does not have a rib on it. So I'll flip over to the gold side, wrap down about four wraps down the bend of the hook a little bit, and then four wraps back up. I'll anchor that in with two or three wraps, and then trim away the excess. You want to be careful. You want to, even though this is a 6 aught thread and it's pretty thin, you want to try and minimize how much you're wrapping in one spot because that will transfer into this floss body. The body on this is just a, a rayon floss that I'm using if you have some other kind of floss by all means, but this is a, a Danville four strand rayon in purple. You don't even have the floss. You could use a purple thread Let's say a UTC 140 or 210 denier in purple would, would work well with this. I only need two strands because of the size of this hook. I don't need all four. So I'll remove two strands and I will anchor my floss on the hook, drawing it to the left so that the ends of the floss are just up the end of the body. And then wrapping and touching turns, I'm going to go move forward. Don't want to pull on this too hard because I don't want to 
end up torquing that material material over to the other side as you see it it kind of is you have to stop every now and again scoot it back up again if it twists around the hook shank like that that will transfer uh, up into the body as we wrap that floss on so you want to keep it fairly smooth i will end with my thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook and then I will stroke the floss on this first wrap. I will stroke this floss out all the way around, getting all of those fibers under the same tension. And then I will apply this to the body of the fly. I will anchor that in and trim away the, the waist. Clean this up just a little bit here and bringing my thread forward to the eye. I'm going to change over to my black thread. I'm using, a, an, again, a Uni 80 and black. I'll run my thread down a couple of eye lengths because that's where we're going to put in the thorax on this little wet fly. should say this little soft tackle. For the thorax on this, I'm using some muskrat belly fur. This is just the under fur. It is a nice gray, even color, uh, even texture. You could use, if you wanted to, some hair's mask. I think the original recipe uh, called for a beaver dubbing. We don't want a huge ball of dubbing here, but we're just going to Put some on here about an inch or so long and I'm going to pretty much just wrap these in the same spot. Kind of working my way back and forth just a little. I want to leave myself at least an eye width behind the eye of the hook for the hackle that I'm going to put in here. But I just want to have a little ball of dubbing right behind that. For the hackle I'm using Hungarian partridge but I prefer to use the darker ones right off the back here as opposed to the lighter gray that you would find up on the shoulders. You want to choose a hackle with a fairly round tip to it. We'll strip away the excess fluff. And measuring our barbs we want to have these about a hook length long. You can have them a little shorter if you want or a little bit longer. It's up to you. I don't need a whole lot of turns of this hackle, so actually about half of this is all I'm going to use. I'll attach my hackle pliers to the tip so that I can stroke these fibers back. That's really all I need for a nice full collar on this. I will trim away the tip so that I have just a little anchor there. And I can tie that in, anchoring it real well, right in front of the thorax and right behind the eye of the hook. All I get is about two wraps of that, which is about what I figured. We just make a smallish head on this, enough to 
just to anchor everything down and make it look nice and clean. The nice little slope down to the eye of the hook. Three or four turn lip finish. And that completes our Craven Soft Hackle, the purple version. You can do these in other colors. I think an olive, maybe even a chartreuse if you're going after panfish, but an olive and um, even a brownish burnt orange would probably work well uh, in some trout streams. But I just wanted to do this. I like this, like I said, it reminds me of the gill candy, which uh, I did a video uh, a number of years ago on the gill candy and I've used for panfish. I just like the coloring in it and just thought it would be just a fun fly to even experiment with, but to do a video on. So that's the Craven Soft Hackle. Hope you like that. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.